to a business. But before I do, I would like to do a small checkup with all of us that are present. So I would like to encourage you, every one of us that is here, please introduce yourself in the chat. Mention where you are doing this call from so that we know how many people are here from Kenya, from other worlds, from other places. We really want to know where you're doing this from. And we are so excited as many people um, get to log in. Let's get to know where are we doing this call from. So introduce yourself in the chat and where you are doing this call from. I think I will start us off by saying that I am taking this very exciting webinar from Dagoreti, Dagoreti Corner. So if there's anyone joining from Dagoreti, just know you're my neighbor. Um, I see Novel Omo, Omoga Rabut joining from Bomet County. Thank you. I see Naomi from South Sea. Thank you, Naomi Mutai. Kaleche Mumo from Karen. Yes, I'm so glad to see you, Kaleche, and welcome here. Sarah Anas Ali from Kiambu. We are so glad to have you. I see Tito from uh, Titus Macau from Wayakiwe. We are so glad to have you. Lisa, I see you. Mungai Joroge from Uranga. I see you as well. Thank you so much for being here. I see Anne from Kirinyaga County. Yay, that's my home county, by the way. Mimi, I am a Kirinyaga girl, like Dani, Dani, Dani Kabisa. Ooh, I see we have Bonita from Kampala, Branis Kezia from Tika, Ruth from uh, Raisambu, Peter from Kiambu. We have Doreen John from Kikuyu. We have Mungai from Muranga. Like literally, we are so diverse and that's very exciting to see that we are all from different places in Kenya. If you see that I haven't read your name, just know it's because you are all so amazing. And while we may not manage to call every single person and to see where all of us are tuning in from, just know that you are very, very highly appreciated. I see Valen Fireball. You're from uh, Karen. Ah, if you're from Karen, Kaleche is your neighbor. You better look for her. You better look for her after this. You guys have coffee because clearly, you know, neighbors are neighbors. And we are so glad to have all of us here. I see Roy from Kitale, Transoya. My first session with Lapid. We're so happy to have you. I see Fole Love joining from Thailand. We're so glad to have you. I see Frank from Gidurai. See from Nairobi. Um, we see uh, we can see that we also have um, <clears throat> Doreen John from Kikuyu. I think I had already mentioned your name. And literally, if you're just joining us, please keep checking in. Tell us where you're doing this call from. We would really, really love to get to hear from you. Um, now I would like to do something special as our time moves. If you had been invited together with a friend of uh, together with a friend of yours, we are so glad to have you. And we encourage you for um, we encourage you to literally like get your video on. We'd really love to see who's here with us, baby. We are going to take your questions. We will be biased to only take questions from the people that have their videos on. So yeah, take advantage of that. We would really like to hear um, where are we all doing our calls from that. Um, that would be very great information for all of us to know. Um, as all of you know, this is a very special evening, as I have mentioned when we started, because we are doing a very special webinar. We've been doing this webinars for quite some time now. We had an episode in January. We had one in Feb. We had one in March. And now we are doing the April edition of the Rebirth webinar series. Why Rebirth? Because Rebirth is the theme for the year in our organization that is Lapid Leaders Africa. And by Rebirth, we mean that this is a second chance for everyone, for you, for everyone that is tuning in. You know, it's your time. You can, you can start over. You can start your journey. And we want to be your partners in that journey as you reinvent yourself. We've looked at what is rebirth from the first webinar. We looked at how do you reinvent yourself as a person in the second webinar that we had. We looked at how do you reinvent yourself as someone who is going into business. And we looked 
look at that um, in our third webinar. And now we are going to be looking at a very, very critical topic. And that is the topic of how do you reinvent your brand? And why am I saying this is important? Because we have been doing research within the organization and even with the, without, and we have seen that nowadays, one of the greatest assets that anyone can have in business, in career, in just personal growth, it's probably having a very outstanding personal brand. Actually, not probably, you do need an outstanding personal brand. And then the question becomes, so how do we do that? How do you reinvent your brand? Uh, your brand as a human being. And that is what we are going to be about. As I can see, um, let me read a few more chats. I can see that we have Edwin Ocheng from University of Nairobi, my first time here. We are so glad to have you. Carol from Langata, Nairobi. I see that we have uh, Njuguna from Nairobi, Calvin from Ati River, Beth Caroline from Kiambu County, Valen from Karen. We're so glad to keep having your messages. And I would like to mention one last thing um, before we go on to our guest for the night. It's that um, we also have this event with people tuning in from LinkedIn Live, just because we knew that uh, with the number of people that have registered, not everyone, only on a priority basis, do you get to be part of the call on Zoom. So if anyone, um, maybe if you have a friend who's trying to log in, just tell them to tune in on LinkedIn Live as that is where they can also tune in to the event, but they will get the same great quality and they will get the same amazing opportunity to ask any questions that you may have, as well as, you know, like any comments you have, we are going to be very, very ready to listen to you. And with that said, I think I would like to welcome just one person. Um, I see Wango, I see you from Kahao West, invited by my sis and bro June and Jack from Karen. We're so glad to have you. And indeed, it's like, it's such a joy to be hosting all of you here. So I would like to invite, I may not be able to see everyone who's my, on my screen for today, uh, but I would like to welcome uh, my colleague, from Lapid Leaders Africa, Dennis Karapa. Dennis, I do not know whether you're here. If you are, please just use a hands up emoji so that I know that you're here to do a very brief introduction, like three minute introduction of who we are as Lapid Leaders Africa, just for the sake of those of us who are, you know, tuning in for the first time as you have seen in the chat, those who do not know who Lapid is and what we do, we would really love for you to have that opportunity to get to know who we are and what we do. So if my colleague, Dennis Karafa, you're here, please um, let the host unmute you. We would love, love, love to hear from you. And then we're gonna go into our interview ASAP, ASAP. With that, Dennis Karafa, kindly um, let me know. Um, I see Mark Felix, we are glad to have you all. Yes, please introduce yourself, of course. Um, you guys, as you can see, we are taking care of you on every direction. So we want that if you have any questions for Kaleche, even before we get into um, having like questions with her, this is your time to ask, all right? Um, this is your time to ask. So drop your questions in the chat. We are definitely gonna be asking them um, in our Q&A session towards the end of this webinar. With that said, I would like to know, my colleague Karapa, are you here? I'm trying to look through the name. Hi, Nisma. Yes, 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 I'm here. Um, thank you so much for that uh, fantastic introduction. Uh, to the session. I'm definitely looking forward to the conversation this evening. As you have so rightly mentioned, my name is Dennis Karafa. I work at Lapid Leaders Africa as the Chief of Staff. Um, Respect my colleague and I know I have a few of us uh, who we work with here at Lapid in the call. Uh, what we do as an organization is that we work with um, young people, um, ladies and gentlemen who are looking forward to becoming change makers for the continent of Africa. We do this by uh, running two specific programs. Uh, one is the flagship program, 
uh, which primarily works with young people within the ages of 18 to 25 to equip them with the skills, tools, uh, and mindsets and networks that they need to be problem solvers. The other one is the Crossroads program, uh, which we have worked with young people who are stepping into uh, the managerial space uh, with about uh, three to five years of experience, and they're looking forward to accelerating their leadership um, roles uh, within the various workplaces, who will be employed, who will be in running a business, and they just are a place in their lives where they need uh, to find some guidance on, on what the next step looks like. Um, and so we've been in existence since 2014. Uh, we have run several cohorts for the flagship experience, and we're also currently doing an intake for the Crossroads program with a class set to start in May. Um, and some of the key topics that we consider in both programs are around branding, how to set yourself apart uh, from your colleagues um, within a very competitive space. And that's where this conversation is also very important for us all, because we live in a time where the, the marketplace is volatile uh, and we're required to constantly reinvent ourselves. And so the question is, how do we use our brand um, as an asset and how do we leverage on the various tools uh, and the various opportunities that are available to us in a fast changing world to make sure that we are the best versions of ourselves both internally and also with the brand that we share out there and so with that i think uh, i would like to hand over the session back to you Ispa. i know you have quite a bit prepared for the audience and i hope that we will all be able to learn quite a bit from this and also to engage with Lapid in our future uh, webinars and also intakes that we will be having. Thank you once again, uh, Karibu Nisana. Over to you, Rispa. Awesome. Thank you so much, Karafa. And with that, we are going straight to the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you have all been waiting for, I introduce to you our guest for the night, that is the one and only, the most iconic Aleche Mumo. Many of us know her as a radio show host from Kiss FM. You know, she was mentioning the other day, a lot of people tend to go back to that moment. And I say, do you know what? It's because it was such an excellent job. Of course, everyone remembers. But yes, like besides having been a radio show host, Aleche Mumo is actually, uh, like she is the CEO and founder of the KM Network. She is also a content creator, but above that, like she's a great story storyteller and she is a household name as all of us know her. She runs a YouTube channel, Conversations with Alete. I hope that you guys are checking it out or if you haven't, our team from Lapid Leaders Africa will be uh, sharing the link to Conversations with Alete just so that um, you are able to go follow her and follow the stories because she is a great storyteller. Kaleche is also an e event host. Kaleche is like she's still a radio host in different ways now, running her own K, you know, like the KM radio. And with that, I mean, that would not even be a just introduction just because Kaleche is so many more things. I mean, um, from being a child of God, from being a person who you know, also empowers and encourages other people to grow. I mean, Kaleche, you are an inspiration in so many ways. And with that, I welcome you to first and foremost, say hi to us. Good evening, Kaleche. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. I hope you can hear me clearly. Thank you so much for the introduction. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here. I am excited, Rispa, to you know be speaking to all the amazing people who've tuned in. I can see so many people are tuned in right here through mm -hmm. Zoom. I've checked into LinkedIn. I can see others there. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for being here. Um, excited to be part of um, the conversation. And yes, you've introduced me with the many things. <laughs> um, and true yeah. indeed, um, most people do know me in the capacity of being a radio host. That's my most um, famous occupation that I have done in my life that yeah. is public. Uh, but that said, I definitely am a storyteller. I am a communicator. And media being the best forum for to, for me to do it on, I have been working with different aspects of media, media for a couple of years. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, at the same time, I'm an actor. If you didn't know, um, it helps when you act. 
it, it really brings out how you speak to people. Public speaker, I train on media consultancy to companies who have mm -hmm. um, you know, staff that need it. So it's about really diversifying who I am with mm -hmm. um, the talent and gift that I have. And I am grateful. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Indeed, we are so excited to have you. I mean, I know there's, I mean, I know there's quite a number of people here who are like shouting in their head, oh my God, <laughs> it's Kalecha. I guess I'm one of those, but you know, I have to be trained for this. Um, uh, so with that, thank you so much for introducing yourself indeed. And with that, once again, I would want to encourage every single one of us, if you have questions for Kalecha, this is your time. You're literally getting a free consultation for once this is not gonna be a daily thing. for once yes <laughs> we repeat yes. for once the rest for once, will be yes. paid for yes <laughs> oh yes and so with that um uh, maybe let me just introduce us to the topic for the day of which we are talking about reinventing your brand and you know like personal branding has become such a big topic and we have seen it being addressed in there but I feel like sometimes people don't really get what it is. So my first question to you, Kaleche, is what mm. really is personal branding and what does it mean to you? Okay, so personal branding, I feel sometimes people overthink what it is, right? Mm. Um, mm. Because it is your identity. Just the same way when you pick up a pen and mm. you immediately look at it, its qualities. There's something about it, like this is a gel X pen. And before I even read the name, there's the ballpoint tape. It will tell me something. There's something about the way it's structured and designed, right? Now that will inform me to start investigating deeper. Okay, this is a pen, but it's not just your ordinary pen. There's something about it because it's been fashioned that way. The brand has been set apart in a unique way. So mm -hmm. the first thing I like to tell people is, you are a person who was created with a personal identity by the almighty. Mm -hmm. So first things first, there is no other person like you. They mm -hmm. may have similarities in the field, but there's something unique in you mm -hmm. that makes you an identified personal brand, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to adding the value that makes you stand out, that's when we start talking personal branding. Like, mm -hmm. have I identified what is my purpose? What am I good at? Because you can't do everything. Mm -hmm. We sometimes get it twisted where there are things we like. There are mm -hmm. things that sound famously interesting or are trending and mm -hmm. we want to do those, but we're not good at them. Yeah. So how is your personal brand going to stand out or what makes it important to me when I look at it is you were named by your parents mm -hmm. they are the first people who branded you first let's start there mm -hmm. so as Rispa Wanja your parents branded you Rispa Wanja yeah their brand goes on into your DNA right there are certain yeah. things you do that are of the lineage of your people yeah. Whether it's stronger on mom's side, stronger on dad's side, there's something about you that is unique. Then there's mm -hmm. the extra value that God has given you. So for me, a personal mm -hmm. brand is an identity of a person who is unique and mm -hmm. there is no double of. That's where mm -hmm. it all starts. The key is learning what makes you you. Mm -hmm. Learning more about yourself. Understanding who you are what's unique about you what mm. is it that you do that the people around you and this is not i'm not talking about your my fans or people who just will sing any tune to mm. whatever you're 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 playing no i'm talking about what most people will tell you and say hey you know what rispa there's mm -hmm. something unique about your voice. And it can't be just like five people it has to be people who you don't also know then you pick yeah. that and decide okay this sounds like this is something personal to me that mm. identifies me and separates me from another Rispa. Mm. So for me in totality, it's really the gifts that you have, the talents that God put in you that mm. make you a specific brand. Mm. And then now your job is to identify them and then mm. go and build on each and every one of them so that you stand out even more. Mm. Because the person who created the pen, for example, 
Yeah. What is something that will write? Mm. But not only write, but write with a gel feel. I don't know, it does what, I don't know how to explain it further because I'm not the creator of the pen, but there's something. But mm. they knew writing was the essence. I mm. can write, okay, but how do I write? What's mm. different between me and a big pen and a fountain pen and mm. a pencil? something like that so yeah mm. in, in a nutshell i'd like the people who are here to start thinking about it from a mm. very personal direct from the creator how you were mm. created makes mm. you the person because it's personal it's about yes. a person right mm -hmm. yeah yeah Ooh, awesome i love that let me just recap one thing you have said that we overthink personal brand and we Indeed. overthink how to brand ourselves i mean Indeed. i think most of the time it's you're in your head wondering, oh my God, so what's my personal brand? Maybe it's we have a challenge in our generation that people still feel like enoughness is found outside of themselves. So I love the way you have defined a personal brand as something that we already seem to have access to. And I would love, I would love to move on to another question actually that had been asked. So if you as Kaleche Mumo were to define what your brand is, what is it? I mean, I think we know it, but what, what is your personal brand? If I was to define my brand, okay. Yeah. So my brand is a well-spoken woman who is passionate about communication, mm. passionate about relationships mm. and how we can change our perspectives by enhancing the relationships we each have. So mm. for me, my personal mm. brand has to be true to the fact that that is something I believe as a person innately. Mm. I do believe that that is what makes the world go round because we are all in a series of different relationships, whether mm. it's the relationship you have with your toilet. I'm going to make it as basic as that. Yeah. How you keep your bathroom, the oh. relationship you have with your food, mm. the relationship you have then with human beings from your parents, your siblings, mm. your, your workmates, your classmates, your lecturers, mm. whoever it is, mm. it is relationships make the world go round. Mm. So for me, that is my strong suit. That is where I speak life into. That is where I find God has gifted me to speak. He's also gifted me to use my voice in, in places and spaces like this, where I can speak some truth into other people's lives. So for me, it's about giving through mm. relationships. Right now we are here having this whole relationship as I speak life into you who are here yes. listening. So oh, that, yes, that's for me is powerful. It's powerful. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And I think you really, because it is powerful. And you know, I can see, I can already see some questions coming in. So I'll try ask the questions I have while also peeling into them. So someone is here wondering, so how do I go about identifying my talents or my gifts? So my question to you would be, how have you developed your personal brand over time? So like I mentioned, when I was um, defining what personal branding means to me, yeah, yeah, there are things that you do effortlessly, right? Mm -hmm. That you have been doing for a while and have been noticed by people around you beyond your own family and friends. Yeah. There is something you do uniquely. I mean, you will find a person who is an accountant, for example, has always been good with numbers, very fast, very swift, right? And yeah. that could be from as far back as primary school. They've never lost their touch. They know how to calculate these things. They know how to save in their personal life. Yeah. Now, that person has a talent of being a financial analyst from the get. Mm. So... Understanding what you're good at starts by identifying what do people say you're good at? What do you do? You know, you know, eh? by yeah. the way, the yeah. things you do effortlessly well. Mm -hmm. And there could be a multitude of them sometimes. I'm good at speaking. I've always been a good orator. I've always used um, the English language very well. And that was noticed through my life by the teachers who are around me. Right. Mm -hmm. So I started, I, I mean, I, my first acting role, I was nine acting with seniors who are in high school because mm -hmm. they identified that I could speak in a certain mm -hmm. way that they wanted. I mm -hmm. was doing all sorts of speaking kind of engagements. I'm good at singing. So I was singing as well. 
Mm. I love to cook. I cook well, you know, so there are many things, but then which one of those makes mm. you the mm. happiest and do you feel the most comfortable doing? Mm. Now that becomes something you can use to mm. define your brand. Because you see, there's no point of doing something for the rest of your life that doesn't make you happy. Okay? Yeah. There is just no point. Mm. So you better be doing something that you are good at mm. uh, effortlessly and you enjoy mm. and love doing. Then it will it will actually be mm. even better mm. when people receive what it is you are delivering. Mm. It will come out so, so, so much better. Mm. So I always say, pick on those things that you are good at. List them down. Because mm. like I said, there will be many. Which mm. are the ones that are a priority? Which are the ones that are making you feel you mm. can do this even in your sleep and it will still be excellent. Mm. Then use that particular thing to start building it as your purpose, right? And I know mm. life is hard. You may not be able to do that item to mm. make money now because mm. I assume majority of the people here are young, either in campus or just finished campus. There are a lot of young people who are here. Yeah. yeah. So you may find yourself in a position like, okay, but this is not going to make me money. First, mm. I feel like your generation is all about the money, which I believe will be yeah. the end of you if you continue working like that. Let me just put it out there right here, right now. Mm. It's not, if it's all about the money, then, you know, mm. Mm. just do whatever, sell cools, whatever, mm. you know, mm. d- don't ask about purpose, just do what you can to get your money, but you will not have fulfillment. And mm. the problem is you're mm. all growing older. And as you grow older, you will mm. find that you want to do things that give you satisfaction in your soul. Mm. The sooner you start doing them now, yeah. the easier it will be for you to perfect it as you grow. Mm. Because you also have to give yourself space to grow. You can't be perfect 100% now. Mm. We still need to learn, right? So, mm. I mean, I'd say I'd say it's, it's already there. Just narrow it down. Be true to mm. yourself. Be honest with mm. yourself. Because a lot mm. of times we're not very honest with ourselves. Yeah. And we want to do the things, like I said, which are hype which look cool, which are trending. Mm -hmm. But uh, to be honest, you're not really good at it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Then you start blaming the world, society, and people are not giving you breaks. Yeah. No. Manzi, you know. No, no, I was going to say, and and because all these things take time, I keep, Mm. um, I've shared this before in different forums, but I'll share it for this particular forum. A lot of people think I woke up like this and just was on radio, was doing what? Yes. Friends, I graduated in the year 2000 in a degree that had nothing to do with um, media because my parents didn't believe that that could build anybody a career. Mm. That's the generation of parents I have. Mm. And so they refused to pay for anything remotely resembling. And we didn't have options back then. It was only Daystar which had started the degree. It was still relatively new. Mm. And they were not feeling that vibe because that was like in 90. Mm. In fact, I remember haggling before I went to campus. I took some time because Mm. uh, I finished in 94 Mm. and I was battling to go to do this communication thing for about a year Mm. before my Yeah, or you go and pay for yourself and you move out. So you know, I had to think mm-hmm. about a year. So I started. Mm-hmm. I started my my university in ninety six as opposed to ninety five mm-hmm. because of that battle. Mm-hmm. And I graduated in two thousand. Mm-hmm. I gave the degree. I did international relations with a marketing minor. Mm-hmm. I gave the degree to my parents. Here you go. And then I went to look for what I wanted. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it took the hustle of trying to send demos to the then new FM stations for five years, five, one, two, three, four, five, before Mm. I got a chance to put a foot in the door of anybody's radio station. But you guys want it now. Yeah. You're not willing to keep pushing. (laughs) You You try, you send your, you send your, your CV to two places, you give up. Mm. Five years. Five. Mm. Five. What? Five. I didn't get in until 
five years had passed. I didn't get my own show proper, proper until the sixth year was over. Wow. Wow. So, Kaletra. so mm-hmm. Cause when I got in, I got, I won a competition for radio. Mm-hmm. They said, it's just a training. I was just excited to do the mm-hmm. training. Then mm-hmm. after there was no guarantee of a show. Mm-hmm. A few months later, I got a show, but it didn't last for long at Capitol for three months. And when mm-hmm. I was moving to KISS, they didn't have a show. They offered mm-hmm. me news. And I'm like, mm-hmm. what is news? When is, what, what, what? I don't want yeah. to do news. I already mm-hmm. gave the degree of international relations to the parents. Me, I don't yeah. want to do this thing. But then mm-hmm. again, mm-hmm. I had to listen to my eldest brother tell me listen it's a foot in the door of the current Mm. biggest station in the country Mm. go in yeah and push while you're in Mm. it's easier to push while you're in in it's easier to ask for another show when you're inside Mm. not a whole breakfast presented at capital which is what i which is what i could have done because I already did three months of being a breakfast anchor, which is the biggest radio mm. host of mm. any station, but wisdom, peer, yeah, wisdom. wisdom. Wow. Wisdom. Wow, Kaletre. Yani, so it's just like, you know, I, I think you have noticed I've been going up and down like this. I'm just, okay, I've just given up. I'll come, release it, then I'll just make my own notes because I'll be literally, <laughs> I am literally taking notes. I love the way you have said five years. I, you know, Wikipedia did tell us this thing. I have tried to stalk you everywhere so that I know information. No one has mentioned that you had a whole five years before you got in. You and see, that, mm, you, you have to remember, yeah. I come from the time where there was no internet. Ah, uh, ah. Oh, internet I came. Forgot. <laughs> and 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 such a like things when I was mm. already working and I had worked for some time. We didn't have. Mm. Mm. The most we had was uh, was what Hotmail, uh, and a chat thing called High Five. Like we didn't have a, mm. the world wide mm. web, not yet to the level where they were mm. writing about Kenya or, Ke- or mm. even Kenyans knew how to write. So this mm. information, unless I share with you, you mm. might not find it, or you'd have to go look for specific interviews where I have spoken mm. about it before. But yeah, it took mm. time. So patience i mean i I knew i had the gift right i uh, it wasn't that i wasn't able to speak but Mm -hmm. in those years the other thing is someone will say well well didn't you feel like you wasted five years i mean you were already good Mm -hmm. also god's timing is perfect Mm -hmm. god's time is Mm -hmm. perfect because Mm -hmm. in those five years i got some other training that i never expected Mm. so I've left university I've gone uh, you know to chase what I believe I should chase at the time Mm. homeboys were starting out their office while I was in USIU I was in the welfare committee of the student council so I used to be the one in charge of running events and so we had worked together and Mm. they loved the way I was running the gigs while I was in campus I mean I didn't Mm. think about it then and so they they come calling from where mm. I was doing my internship. I was doing my internship and a contract, a short mm. contract, my first, first job at the Turkish embassy. And they come calling and they tell me, do you want to manage our, our outfit? And I'm like, mm. uh, okay, yeah. But first I have to figure out how I'm going to leave this supposedly cushy job that could lead me into, you know, becoming a foreign policy person, which is what I studied for, that I don't Mm -hmm. care about, Mm -hmm. uh, and convince my parents that I'm taking another job while I'm living under their roof that they cannot understand. And I Mm -hmm. always remember my parents' reaction. Mm -hmm. You're going to work for DJs. Mm -hmm. And then they are called homeboys. They're boys who stay at home. How lazy can they get? Those are the ones you're going to work with. Doing Mm -hmm. what? At mm. managing them managing what so it was a hot it was a hot mess anyway mm. but my premise was take the job it's paying you very little at the time graduates of of uh, my time the yeah. good jobs you were being paid twenty five thousand, and that was a really really good salary mm. so with the grades i had that's what my parents were expecting for me now mm. i go and i take this job for eight thousand bob 
you can see where the problem is yeah you can see yeah. there's a problem i take no. that job for eight thousand mm. and i start from there but my idea was these guys had just been signed up at capital fm mm. as djs so the chances of me now getting to meet the Capital FM people, who is a radio station I'd love to work for, has just what? Increased. Increased, exactly, and yeah. So that's why I went. Mm -hmm. Long story short, in the five years, um, I left there, went to another studio where they taught me mm -hmm. how to be a, um, an a, 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 what, a sound engineer. Mm -hmm. They encouraged me to... to use my voice now and they trained me properly on how to use my voice as a voiceover so suddenly i was making extra cash doing voiceovers and you know from there in mm -hmm. those five years yeah. i learned to be able to produce the radio show for myself so by mm -hmm. the time i got onto the radio station and learned the skills while there because of course there's still more to learn i was yeah. able to now use those five years which could have felt like they were lost Mm. to build wow. myself and set me okay so i think yeah i can see the rest of us are still here so i think kaleche has just dropped off but really thank you so much for your questions as she comes back in i'd like to read a few of the comments and questions that have come in just so that you know that we are really taking this into consideration um <clears throat> See that we have Dio Abraham Dow, fourth year student at, of mass media and communication from South Sudan in the Kampala campus. Thank you so much, uh, Dao, for being here. And I hope that this, to some extent, is actually helpful to you and how you can look at your career in media as well. Uh, how does one go about discovering their talent? I think Nelson, that was quite answered when Kaleche said that these are things you already have, you have always had them and really it's not going to it's not that difficult to discover them as we say the first statement that was made in this call is that we overthink our talent we overthink what our brands are we overthink a lot so Kaleche thank you for coming back I was just recapping a few of the questions that we have um I'll go I'll, I'll go on to the next question but maybe something that you can keep in your mind as we answer the next question is someone has asked how do you brand yourself as a professional when you come from a political family but still remain a public figure and i think what i'm going to ask you um hopefully it's also going to answer that question is you've been in the media for quite some time um we are also in the generation of fake it till you make it you know <laughs> you already mentioned that that's our generation i would mm. be lying if I, if I didn't say i've tried to fake some things well it didn't work but here we are but the question is so how do you remain consistent with your brand even as you move over to different spaces you know in like right yeah okay okay so um i think i even want to answer the question first because i have a question for that person when yeah. you say you come from um a, a family that's based in politics mm. what have they got to do with you mm. because that's their decision and if you're not aspiring to do the politics then you set yourself mm. apart it's mm. been done before you won't be the first set yourself apart pick what it is you like to do mm. and start speaking for yourself because while you're a child yes you're in the shadow of your parents but as you become an adult you have the opportunity to refine and define who you are mm. by what it is you're doing and the biggest element for this generation that is a struggle is you have social media but you use it for fun memes usherati and others Yet that is your biggest tool mm -hmm. to defining yourself as a yeah. brand. If I asked mm -hmm. all the people who are here to tell us mm -hmm. the truth about what the names of their handles are, I can see real names yeah. over here. But if you ask them for their handles, they'll give you some other power form 62. I don't know what, what nonsense. Yet that is a tool to define you as a brand, because I'll tell you today, any, any employer will ask for your digital footprint because it tells me who you are, how you think, what you value, 
what brand are you? Mm. So what are you using your social media for? Say it's for fun, for fun, for fun. But yet you're here crying. You want to be, let's say, a TV host. Oh, akuna opportunities, akuna nini. Yet you have what I never had. We never had, I'm telling you, social media came when I was probably four years into my 10-year career, four or five even. So how are we doing it? We were doing mm -hmm. the work. Now you have this tool that allows you to talk to the world, not mm -hmm. just a couple of Kenyans who are mm -hmm. tuning into the radio station of choice among many other radio stations like we were faced with. Mm -hmm. And you are now using it for fun times and to do things that really are not adding to this thing you're calling your purpose and your value. Mm -hmm. So whose loss is that? It's your mm -hmm. loss, right? Mm -hmm. All right, now to your question, just uh, yes. repeat it to me one more time. Yes, no, I was saying, so we are in a space where people want to fake, like whatever I have to fake, I will fake it. You know, moving with the wind mm -hmm. as long as I remain relevant. So for you, clearly, you know, your name has been established and it hasn't changed. And that doesn't feel to have been in consistency. So the question is, how have you, how do you remain consistent in your brand, even as you move across different fields, different careers, and even as you go into different spaces of serving? So one of the things that I find interesting about the Fake It Till You Make It uh, community mm. is that they are the same people when they are approaching what they want to watch online. They want it to be authentic. They want it to be unrehearsed. They want it to be natural. Mm -hmm. so if you want to watch that that means that that appeals to you in a certain way mm -hmm. but why don't you want to be that why are you struggling to be that mm -hmm. I get it there's a lot of pressure with um, what you see how it looks enticing and exciting but that's what also alerts you that these are the end times eh? that mm -hmm. it will look exciting and okay sorry guys but me i'm a woman of god so i'll always bring it back to jesus yeah so work with me here and if you are keen you will understand that it means something and it's going to impact you somehow yeah. so if you um if you are are excited or influenced or you said you, you suddenly feel that you should be doing more than you should my question to you is mm -hmm. what is making you feel a lack in your life Hmm. why do you think you're not enough this is gonna force you to go deep and dig back into your upbringing the sum total of who you are today is the impact of how you were brought up hmm. this is a hard one for many people because it's about what was mom and dad doing that I didn't like was mom not there was dad not there there's all these things mm -hmm. and they influence how you think about yourself mm -hmm. right they mm -hmm. influence who you've decided you are they mm -hmm. influence how you imagine people see you and so that then creates this kag up where you see someone else's and you feel intimidated mm -hmm. and you feel you should be showing off in this way to look like atawewe uko Mm. I believe that being your authentic, true self, and then also as a young person, please allow yourself the time to grow. Those things you want half the time are things that some of us took years to work for. Mm. Mm. You know how guys say, hey, me, I want to be paid in double digits. Me, I want to be paid. I'm as in a triple digits. What do people say these days? You know, it's because six the pressure figures. is a lot. We want six, six figures. figures. In dollars. So, yeah. You want six figures. Uh -huh. in, do in dollars. In dollars let, me, my friend. let me tell you about that. So, mm -hmm. as a graduate with mm -hmm. honors, it took it took how many years of my career? So remember, I told you I, five years after I graduated. Then yeah. when we started, we started at 50k. We stayed, we stayed, we stayed. By the time I was seeing those digits you guys are saying, mm -hmm. I was probably now headed towards nine years since I graduated. Wow. So calm down, sit down and just allow yourself to go through the process. Mm -hmm. The key is mm -hmm. learn as much as you can, where you can, even if it is free. 
First of all, if you're still living at home, somebody's paying your goddamn bills. Mm. You want money to just go and have fun. Mm. But you will be told, I call upon you. I say I have a production and I'm looking for a couple of interns to learn. Mm. Akuna do. Mm. If I had to walk, I walked. And I know it's hard to hear now, mm. but the one who will get this lesson today, the one who will try, they will have a story to tell the way I'm telling this story. Mm. Me, I love my hair. Let me give you just a short an anecdote. I love my hair. I love looking good. I've always loved it. But now when I got the job at um, the studios, which taught me how to do good production work and how to use my voice, which I had was great. Mm. See, the offices were far. Mm. And then now at the same time, there's the hassle of my mom is not happy that I've taken these jobs that she doesn't understand. I need to move. Mm. So every penny I'm getting, mm. I need to save. Mm. So I had to cut my hair. And then I used to walk. Mm. So the job was in Karen. I live, my parents live on Waiyaki way. So I figured out how you'll walk, how much distance so that you spend mm. only how much bus fare so that you save and, uh, and when I moved from homeboys at 8,000, they only added me 2,000. So I was now earning 10K, but I've moved to a place further yeah. to work. So it's, it's how bad do you want this life mm -hmm. that you're saying you'd rather fake it for? And do you know what? How long can you fake it for? Mm -hmm. You'll slip up. If it was to impress a chick, she'll find out she'll be more pissed and should have said, why couldn't you just be you? I could have loved you as you. Let yeah. me get to know you as you. And I find that guys struggle with this a lot more these days mm -hmm. where there's the pressure of, I want to get to do this chick. Also shooting your shot higher than you should be shooting it. Please just men here, stop. Mm -hmm. If you know the chick is out of your league, I mm -hmm. get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. Your hunters, I get it. But bro, <laughs> stop shooting your shot higher. If I could tell you the amount of youngins trying to shoot their shot towards men, I'm like, wait, Atta, what are we talking about? We are not on the same planet. <laughs> like, well, what are we? Wait, nani, I mean, hey, hey could I say, you do hey. Boy no, I want them to be realistic with life also. Yeah. Just be realistic for two seconds. Mm. If you are feeling pressured to do more mm. or to show a certain side, you mm. need to go back and find out what's causing that. Mm. What are you what are you feeling? you lack what is it you think about yourself mm. that has made you think that you are less why is it that you don't know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made that you are separated and there's no two of you what is it that's making you not remember that wow when you go wow. back and find out like go back and seriously have a meeting with yourself mm. ask yourself where you feel you're lacking why do you feel bad that mm. so and so is living this life where probably, like I always mm -hmm. tell people, I didn't choose where to be born. I didn't mm. choose which schools to be taken to. Mm. I woke up, I found that my parents lived in X place. They took me to mm. schools which I could learn the good English. It is not my choice. If yeah. I feel that I should have gone to a school, for example, back mm. in the day, I used to ask my dad, why aren't you taking us to St. Austin's? And my dad looks at us and said, because... I would like you, I can afford, but I will yeah. not. Because I want you to have an average life so that you work harder. Mm. He gave us a reason. Mm. Now, whatever the circumstance your background is, is mm. usually what affects how you behave and why yeah. you do what you do. So mm. if you fake it, I'm just here to tell you, it will catch up with you. Mm. And it will hurt a lot more than it would have if you are mm. your true, authentic mm. self. Mm. Wow. Wow. One more. Okay. Sure. One more, mm -hmm. one more. Sure, not, sure, every sure. not everyone's going to love you. Not mm. everyone's going to appreciate the version of you that is authentic. Tough, but somebody else will. And that somebody else could be the one that's holding the ticket for your future. Mm. So just be you. That's it. Be you. Wow. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm silent because I'm like, you know, if we end up the webinar here, we literally have enough to feed on for the next <laughs> Until we, we have the next webinar. And I love that you've actually anticipated. There's someone who had asked a question. How do you keep up with the pressure of your personal brand? And I love that you have said it goes a lot back to how do we feel we are enough? Or why mm. do we feel we are not enough so that you have mm. to bow mm. to pressure? 
And I also love that somebody else had also asked, um, you know, like in your in your brand, how do you deal with, for example, cyberbullying or, you know, exactly, you have trolls, you have people who don't like mm-hmm. you, especially in social media, which brings me to a question on branding and social media. Mm. So we have quite a number of people, including youngsters like myself. Uh, we are like, oh, me, I don't like the social media stuff. You know, yet we have a lot of attitudes that could be influenced by different things, really. So the question to you is, what would you say to a young person as far as the value of social media goes to one's personal branding? Like, how important is social media to personal branding? Okay. Um, Just to answer that, I'd say right now, the way the times are changing, you have to be adaptable to them. Remember, I've told you that I am from a generation that was working and well into a career that needs for you to be heard on all, you know, spots of the world without social media. And we still made it work. Okay. Mm, Now the times have changed. Social media has come. I'm 47 years old. But I can tell you this, there are things I will have learned on how to do on social media. And every day I'm hanging mm. out with people who I'm asking them, how do you do this? What do you do here? What do you do? So that I keep up. Mm. And the reason you want to keep up and keep knowing is because as times diversify, so should your personal brand. Mm. I started off on radio, an FM radio station without Mm. the backing of social media. We went into social media, but we were using it for its real name, social, just hang out with friends. And then we slightly towards the end of the career started moving towards um, Twitter becoming a very, very strong element of how we communicate quicker and faster with audiences and carry Mm. that into my career in TV, but Twitter mm-hmm. was a big thing, making um, the, the the trends with your, your show name and whatever topics you were talking about became an element, right? Yeah. So yeah. here you are today as a young person who was born mm-hmm. and found the internet, social media. And mm-hmm. as you grew up, this thing has been in your life. Mm-hmm. Okay, It's been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. You knowing how to keep this working to your benefit is the Mm. most important thing you can do for yourself today. Mm. There are a lot of people who want careers in media. Mainstream media, unfortunately, is a dying brand. Mm. Today, unless it is media, ask yourselves, I mean, what do you watch? Do you find yourself sitting down to watch local TV? Rarely, unless it's a specific show. We Mm. had nothing else. TV began at five o'clock and by... Eight o'clock, you are being told it's time for bed because then your TV closed at 10 p.m. That's how I grew up. Now you have endless, endless content everywhere. So what's mm-hmm. happening? The mainstream brands, the newspapers. When's the last time you read a newspaper? Niliona. I have I have seen one somewhere on the street. Exactly. I'll just, I'll just read my news passing. Exactly. Yeah. So if people are reading content ready to go, and mm-hmm. you want to be a brand that is seen in what, and by the way, I'm not just going to speak about this from a media perspective. Mm-hmm. You are looking to be an interior designer. You Today we have doctors who are branding themselves as social, friendly, on social media, and it's winning them patience. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, you guys know um, the musician, Dr. Rain. He's a real doctor. He's a pediatrician. He's married Mm. to Della, the other Mm. artist. Mm. Now, he decided to not only use his social media for music, he started using it as a doctor. So he has tidbits about different elements of, of medical issues that come up for parents with young children. And he shares this on his social media. What has happened? He has people now lining up telling him, have you opened a clinic? We want to come. He started a business line just by mm. using his social media. Mm. The other fear we have is that we think that because only one person is following us or 10 people are following us, we can't make an impact. Mm. If you continue to create content without worrying about the numbers, you should be focused on that one person whose life you want to change. Mm. That one person who you impact is your advertising tool. 
Mm. If today you, you, you're here on this um, webinar and you hear something that I have said that will impact and change your life and that you know tomorrow you can follow me and find something, another gem, you want somebody else to find the gem. The first mm. thing you're going to do is tell your friends about it, isn't mm. it? Mm. Good, news, good news, you will tell like three people. Bad news, you'll mm. tell 10. Mm. So the key is use your social media to work for you in whatever you're doing and don't go looking for the masses. I would rather be a niche brand or mm. high paying niche than to look for everything and anything everywhere. Mm. And I use that model specifically as an MC. Mm. I do corporate only. I will not do weddings. I will not do small parties. I will not because that's not who I would like to speak to. And when I stand mm. to do, let's say, an MC gig like that, I mm. feel better and more confident and I'm good at it when I'm speaking corporate speak there's a formality there's a key process there's dignitary there's that works mm. for me mm. so that is the brand positioning that I yeah. will now not take just any job yeah because then it will not be true to me as a brand and the way I've separated myself mm. now for my social media I've always stuck to what worked for me. What worked for me on radio, we were talking about relationships. I am a great listener. I give advice. Mm. I, I love to probe the questions because even for me, relationships are mind boggling. Mm. So I probe questions from mm. that perspective. Mm. When I left, if I dropped it and mm. picked up politics, you guys would be like, what in the world is she doing? Yeah, I'd, I'd seem lost, right? Yeah. So again, right. it brings us back to sticking to what you're good at and mm. using it. So your social media handles should read your name the way you want the world to mm. know you. Stop thinking small. Stop thinking about your school friends or your crew mm. or just stop, stop thinking small. Mm. If you want to use social media to be a big brand, Personal for me, my vision is Africa and the world. Mm. So right now, what has happened? I've conquered Kenya because everybody knows the name Kaleche. Mungu. Kaleche. In fact, yeah. when someone hears Kaleche, they ask, is it the one we know? Yeah. Is it the only one? Is it the one? And they already know. And this, this is not because of anything else other than the fact that I was able to position myself and stick to a name. First of mm. all, a name that nobody could pronounce. Everybody got wrong. They called me Kareshe, Carol Chemumo. I'm sure even there are people here who today are still are looking at the spelling of my name and going, Kaleke, ah. Kaleke. Yet they have a friend called Chalo, and they've never asked him why his name is K-Y-A-L-O. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, it is, it is something that I, I stuck with. But I learned that from my former boss um, mm -hmm. on radio, who told me. Initially, when we were at Capital, we used to use one name. Mm. Presenters there used to use one name. And that was what you were known by. And to some extent, when I was starting, I thought, yeah, you know, I, at least I can maintain my privacy. Me, I'm a very private person. So I'm like, I can maintain my privacy. There's mm. one name, so they won't know mm. who I am if I just rock up because I'll be like, there mm. must be 10 others called Kaleche. But when mm. I got to case, my boss mm. said, you cannot mm. be known by one name like a spoon okay you can't yeah. be known by one name like a spoon mm. you mm. can't be known by a pseudonym mm. and then it doesn't appear on your government documents mm. use your names as they appear if your desire again mm. it's all about mm. what you want for yourself if your desire mm. is mm. to become a brand that is known beyond your small circle mm. I'll give you an example of how that doing that and deciding to go by both names changed my life. Mm. One time we were um, coincidentally going to apply for visas to go to the UK. I was going to the UK on my own and this other presenter for their own thing. In fact, I, I think they had a gig or something and they were trying to get the mm. visa. And we happened to be applying around the same time. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Because this person is known by a pseudonym, and he was trying to say, but you guys, you don't know me. They're like, the pseudonym does not appear on your passport. So we don't know what mm -hmm. you're talking about. Mm 
Mm. And that person was denied their visa. Me, I waltzed out with my, because immediately from the door, from the watchman, mm. they knew who I was. And yeah. the document said it was me. And it matched the picture. Mm. That is personal branding that I want you to learn. And that's why I'm insisting. If mm. you want to take your brand to the next level, and you want to use your brand for purposes of, you know, growing yourself, social media is important. Mm. Use it in the right way and it will work for you. You have a free TV, free, mm. free TV mm. and keep, keep going. Mm. What happens is people get tired. Keep going, keep doing your content, keep saying what you're saying. Eventually mm. it will come. Whether it is those wow. five years down the line for me or it's mm. a year for you, mm. don't give up. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. And talking of people who enabled you to, you know, like build your brand or at least know how to start positioning your brand. Allow me to mention just to everyone that is present here. Um, part of why we are working with Kaleche Mumo as Lapid Leaders Africa is because these are things that are key for us. And even Kaleche can tell you that being in spaces that call out the gift in you. You know, I saw a question here, Kaleche. Someone was asking, so how, if I've been in spaces where no one called out my, my, my gift, no one told me that I'm good at something, what do I do? I think the first thing I would encourage you after this, you should definitely check out the work that we do at Lapid Leaders Africa. If I were to mention, I never hosted anything before Lapid Leaders Africa. I, wow. I didn't even know, like, what is this? What do you mean hosting? I never did. But it, I was here. I, I didn't grow up in spaces where, you know, it's not everyone gets to have homes where, oh, they tell you this is a gift you have. You don't get to get that everywhere. But you can get into spaces that call out that gift in you. And I can say for sure that Lapid Leaders Africa has been that place for me and for a lot of people. So that is the end of our commercial break. Check out Lapid Leaders Africa after this. We hope, at least when you come in, I don't believe that anyone comes and leaves the same way that they came. And maybe something else. Um, I see another question, Kaleche, as you just take your like, uh, breather, I can read this question. I feel though we have answered, because this is Philip from you, and he says Twitter has allowed people to use parody accounts so long as they aren't going to be used to steal fake news. The question is, you're called by your employer for an interview, interview, and they are interested in your digital footprint. Then you don't want to reveal them for some reasons on personal branding. How do you use this to be instrumental in personal branding? I think I would say Kaleche answered that for sure. That if you want to make a brand that lasts, consider, consider. Because like if you imagine you're 60 and you called you, okay, I don't even want to imagine a name. <laughs> You've been using some funny name over there and you still want to use your brand when you're 60. I think if you think long term. It's not going to be a challenge how, how you want to handle that. Um, and I love, okay, so there's someone else who asked a question, Kaleche, that we can now go back to. Um, and it's a question I also had. So you're in a very competitive business. Media is very competitive. Social media right now, digital creators, uh, marketing, I mean, um, like it's a very competitive space. So how do you remain authentic? And this is, um, also asked by Elio Tieno, because he was asking, how do you make peace with losing people who do not appreciate the authentic version of you and also avoid falling into the trap of people pleasing? So for you, how have you done that this many years? Uh, okay. Um, I can't, oh, you're muted. Okay, okay, okay. Let's... <laughs> So maybe as you look at that question. Okay. Awesome. So no, go ahead. Um, yeah. So your question is uh, round about how do you go about losing uh, followers, people? Yeah. Maybe the recap is, so how do you remain authentic? And part of that authenticity means that there are people you might lose along the way. So the question ah, okay. was, Yes. So how do you remain authentic to yourself, make peace with losing people uh, while also avoiding to people please? 
okay so I, th- I think yeah. i think i'm the best example of that hmm. what i was viewed as as a radio host what if you listened to the show whatever you thought culture is hmm. for the longest time the definition was the pro women um always fighting men doesn't you know you know is a male basher yeah yet that mm. was the definition of the presenter role that i played on the radio mm. station mm. what many people don't know is that we had characters that we had been given to play that are suited to the audience and the target audience that our bosses who own the radio station had designed the radio station to be mm. so shafi was designed as the kenyan bad boy i was designed as the straight up no nonsense male basha chick who is always you know gets her things correct and everything mm. that is not who i am as a human being okay so when i left then comes this whole persona hosting a talk show with another demeanor that looks serious and looks so put together there's no mm. wildness there's no you know talking loudly and pointing and laughing loudly mm. so what happened the listeners who only liked that element Mm. shaved off okay this is my mm. reality okay i'm not yeah. i'm not talking about stories of other people my reality mm. now i then decide to leave tv and leave mainstream media and go into the world of digital which at the time in 2019 was not yet um such a big thing people hadn't quite understood how to use youtube from the kenyan perspective it wasn't as big okay yeah mm-hmm. so what happens now i lose my tv audience because now they don't know where to find me i can bet you today if i ask a multitude of you who are here they have no idea where i've been the question was hey now liendanga wapi atukuonangi atukusikiangi why because you thought of me in one way my brand has diversified you haven't diversified how you see my brand mm. those who are seriously interested in me as a brand yeah. and saw some value they came with me they allowed me to diversify mm. so what is going to happen you are going to lose people because not everyone will like the new you as you mm. reinvent yourself mm. as you rebrand and now my re- my rebranding is one to to survive two because it's what makes me happy i've grown and there are certain things i'm no longer interested in and if you think about yourself mm. what you're interested in now if you're in your 20s you were not interested in when you were 13 mm. what you're interested in now or think will you know this is it to mefika and we are mm. we are aiming for a b c and d you have dreams of what it will be like when you're 30 let me tell you when you get to 30 even your mm. body will be speaking different Mm. So those things stop being a priority. I mean I re- I remember when I started now earning those two shillings which I felt were real shillings. I was like wow 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 wow. Now we'll just be going out yani yani no one's telling us plus I bought my little old car I have I have transport. And then I just come home and I'm like I don't want to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. So what's going to happen you will get what you really were dying for then you will use for a while then you get tired mm-hmm. i was dying to be on radio mm-hmm. uh, waited for five years or almost six because i did news first mm-hmm. to get in and then after, by by the way by year seven i was now like okay now i'm tired it's the same mm-hmm. thing i'm tired i'm tired and then the panic what next because i had wanted that for so long that it was like oh my god i'm living the dream have you asked yourself today in your youth which is something i wish i asked myself in my 20s mm. when i get the dream do i have a plan for what next mm. you get the dream you get the dream house the dream car the the dream job the dream the dream the dream eh uh-huh. mm. what next mm. so if you haven't asked yourself that question i beg you start asking yourself now mm. where do you want to give back 
Where do you want to start doing things? It, it might not make sense now, but you've got to start mm-hmm. thinking about it. Because mm-hmm. then, then now the reality becomes, I need to do more than just for me, mm-hmm. right? I need to think a little bit further than what I have been dying to get, okay? Mm-hmm. So you've lost, you've lost people who saw you in one way. You've lost the next batch of people who latched on, like for example, K24 was a TV channel that watched more around the country than in Nairobi. So I had a big following in different counties that I would visit. And then now them, they're just thinking, Siurudi, where did you go? And then others, Siurudi Radio, where did you go? Yet Mm -hmm. nobody stopped to ask me, am I happy? Uh... Would, Would going back make me happy? You see, now this is about you, the listener the viewer yeah. you haven't yeah. thought about the person so me mm-hmm. as a person i also have to work on getting content with my changes and growth and as mm-hmm. i reinvent myself i'm reinventing myself into something that is speaking the truth of my purpose and that i can be authentic to mm-hmm. the truth about it is you're all going to grow old and as you grow older there are things that are just going to be exhausting and you don't want to do them anymore mm-hmm. and if you don't want to do them anymore What's the other thing that you can be doing that is closely related and still gives you joy? Mm -hmm. So losing people becomes irrelevant to me because Uh, my mm -hmm. my happiness, my peace of mind Mm -hmm. is so much more important. Mm -hmm. I could have stayed on Mm -hmm. and been that radio presenter who's now just sad and and then I start taking it out on my listeners because Mm -hmm. I am tired of the job Mm -hmm. but I am afraid of leaving because I lose my my fans and I lose Uh, the salary Mm -hmm. Salary, so I could have stayed but I would have been unhappy and the unhappiness will then show in my work then by the time I leave you guys think I'm ah that presenter she was bogus today the reason why people still remember me and value me and I know this and it's not that I'm bragging I know it's because I left at my high peak season when I was still happy Mm. and I still sounded good and I still sounded in it and that's why they remember you always Mm. you're always going to be remembered by what you last did Mm. please let it be good know when to stop and change while you're mm. still at your peak. Mm. When you start to feel, yeah, yeah, I am tired of this thing. It's not working for me. I've done yeah. it. I've done it. I've done it well. I've done it. It's time to diversify. So don't be afraid of losing people. Because listen, you lose to gain new. The fans that I have gained now just doing my Instagram and, and now YouTube and you know doing things that are more compactful and they don't have, I don't have, I have, let's say, 100K followers on Instagram, but I can get like 60 to 100 people viewing and I'm happy Mm. because of the impact I'm doing with them. And then those are the people who are consistent. Mm. Don't be fooled by numbers if they are not consistent. If they are consistent, then you're okay. I want to speak also about the element of... um, it's something's just come to me and I know we spoke about faking it till you make it also mm. playing, playing to your audiences, even as you maintain your brand, how far will you play? Mm. Cause some people, some brands have played so far away from what they told us they were that if I loved them from the beginning, I'm now questioning, are they the same people? They're using the same name same trying to use the same tactic of telling us they are so and so they stand for a b c and d but their actions Mm. are wanting so if you're going to be blown by every wind because of the fans you Mm. will lose and and i don't want to name them but you know them there are lots of (laughs) lots of artists and influencers they started well then they started playing to the audience my fans want to take what to show he he itashika itashika Mm. likes then they just lose they lose the authentic people then they have the people who are coming for for mushene the people who yeah. are coming just first of all they're waiting for you to finish so they can now uh keyboard warrior you <laughs> yeah. they're not really they're not real they're not real so mm. that authenticity is very key very mm. very key yeah thank you so much and i love that 
in the way you've answered that question. You've actually managed to answer some of the other questions I had, you know, from how do you keep your authenticity to the use of social media? So there's someone here who has a concern. Maybe you can answer them in one minute. Um, they're asking, so Kaleche, what if I have already started, I have a stage name that I use and most people know me by that. What does that mean for me? Do I need to rebrand my entire self or what do I do? Okay, so you have um, a stage name yeah. Um, I, I likely you're in the creative space. Yeah, mm. I, I believe likely you mm. are in the creative space. Mm. The question I have for you is mm. how long will that name continue to work for you? I'll give mm. you an example. And this one I will name because it's the truth. Mm. Yummy mommy. She started off creating content as a mom. Yeah. But then after some time, you can only talk about mommyhood for so long you can only share about kids so long. And then she also realized she wanted to talk about other things. She wanted to dive into the world of fashion. So now, mm -hmm. unless if you stick with the brand, yummy mommy, you will have to only do mommy things. Yummy things yeah. So yummy she mommy. just decided she's going by her name, Murugi Muni. Has she mm -hmm. lost people? A few, but mm -hmm. go for it. When you feel you're ready to go for it, mm -hmm. rebrand, and move. I can. I mean, how many companies do you know started out with different names? If you've done yeah. your research properly, mm -hmm. and they are now they are. I mean, Coca Cola didn't start out as Coca Cola. Mm -hmm. It didn't start there. You diversify when you mm -hmm. realize it's not working for you, or mm -hmm. your audience needs something else. So if mm -hmm. you have a stage name, you're mm -hmm. being well known by. If guess what? Guess what? if those people really love you for your work and not for you, they will follow you, whether you call yourself apple, banana, whatever. Mm -hmm. if, they are, if they are true fans of what you do, they mm -hmm. will stick with you. However, mm -hmm. you've got to be selfish and remember your brand name is what will sell you beyond the 50 you have now. Mm. stop thinking about the local space Nairobi mm. think whole of Kenya think Africa think the world mm. think bigger if you think bigger then you will be led to diversify wow I love that I really love that it's like where are your eyes if your eyes are here then you might feel the pain of losing it but if your vision is further than just where where you are, then it makes it easier to make the decision to diversify. And I love that. Exactly. And I think, yeah, and we are definitely coming to the end of this webinar. I mean, we have so many questions. I mean, the only thing I can say, I know that there's so many questions here. We can't answer, we won't manage to answer all of them. So the thing is, you have, I think we'll just encourage you, just stay on the lookout if by god's grace we can convince culture to do another session then we can but for now what i can tell you is take what you're hearing i'm very sure that what we have just had from the time we began in a way you can play with that information to see whether it answers to your question because culture we had seen um I, I saw a few concerns here and i will i will ask them as one question so mm -hmm. someone was like okay so what if it feels like it's too late for me to start maybe i'm older maybe uh, i have like veered off too much from what i think i wanted maybe i did what my, maybe someone did what their parents wanted and now they have been in it for too long they feel like they can't find their way back or if you look at a gen z because i've also seen a gen z question <laughs> I can identify it. You know, I feel like by now I should already have a million followers and I don't have that and I have pressure. So the question is, for Ooh. someone who is starting, what do you tell them? But also specifically speak to the one who feels as if they are late. Okay. Mm. I'll start with the one who feels that they are late. Hi. Mm. You need to calm down. You need to just calm down. down. 
Mm. Late for what? In whose time? The problem is that we all operate according to what society tells us is late. Mm. Okay. Mm. Again, I will use myself as an example. I started acting as a young child. Then I stopped and uh, went into this whole career, mm. went into a space where now, you know, the station felt it owned our voices. So we were told we can't do voiceovers. So I kind of killed that. And yet I loved it. It was extra income. Mm. I stopped acting. And then just the other day, last year too, I'm like, wall up, wall up, wall up. But mm. see, I can act. What is all mm. this? A friend of mine was mm. telling me about a film and, and she's doing a cast. I told her, just send the rules. I look, I see something. I go for it. Me and my whole, at that time, 46-year-old self. I mm. learned the role. Quick, fast. Ah. I don't know those people. I've never mm -hmm. met them. I, I go for another one. I've learned it. So now I'm mm. back as an actor. You didn't know that. No. I'm here. No. no I am an actor. Uh, yeah, there's a film called Life, which is um, 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 Mnet original that is currently uh, showing on uh, Mnet Africa and Maisha Magic has been showing since November. I had a lead role in that. We have another one we're about to film at the end of this year. I'm on a show, Max Baba Twins, just because mm. I said, see, I can, I can also do that. Why not? Yeah. Who said, who's time? Me, I'm sitting here at 47, pretty young in my mind never been married not had children but but god <laughs> you will hear about it all so mm. whose timeline are you operating on mm. and why are you operating on their timeline mm. if you feel old then mm. you're going to you are going to operate old mm. i do not operate old my body these days is the one that's trying to tell me to slow down mm. that one is now not by choice but mm. it's a decision you make so mm. whose timeline? I mm. know of people, I know of, um, I could just quickly remember his name. There's a guy who started his podcast mm. at, at what? At 39. And right now, no, he actually, no, he started it at 40. It's mm. been three years and he is a top tier. He's an American. I don't know him, but currently mm. I watch his podcast like crazy. And he says, I could have sat there and said, I'm too old now. The people who are doing podcasts, I am. So mm. there's no space for me. Mm. Then there's, there's a whole bunch of people your age who want to hear. The people who are younger than you who want to learn. There are people older than you who are like, yeah, I can relate to that. Mm. So it's your own fears. Again, go and have a personal meeting with yourself and find out why you think and who told you. Mm. And why are, they, why are you allowing someone else to say have you sat down mm. and asked God to tell yeah. you whether this is what's for you? Mm. Let me tell you, once you learn to hear the voice of God over your life, mm. you will never go for something that was not meant for you. You will mm. only go for what was meant for you. And mm. it will work so well because it is in alignment with the one who created you as a person so that you have this mm. purpose and personal brand. Mm. The author of it all is the most important. That's the mm. only person me I consult mm. with regards to things that are deep important to me and where I'm going. I mm. work with his timeline. Mm. Mm. And when mm. he says wait, mm. I wait. When he says do not lose hope, I do not lose hope. When mm. his word I read and it says for each was created a mate, I believe him. Mm. And I say, okay, God, there must be something you're working on me and mm. by the way accept to be worked on i accept i'm not perfect i accept that god has to work on me i just started therapy this february this year i used to think that's a crazy thing to do but i'm doing it mm. Mm. because i believe that in working on myself i am preparing mm. myself for what it is i have said i would like mm. never stop learning mm. just Ooh. keep diversifying so awesome. i hope mm. that answers the person who thinks that they are late. Yeah. Yeah. The person who wants a million followers, why? So that you do what with them? That's my first question. Why? Uh, I give you a million followers today. Mm -hmm. Do you think they'll all be watching at the same time? Guess what? No. Two, when they watch, will they benefit? Will their lives be impacted? Or will you just be saying, I have a million followers, pay me. <laughs> what is it for? What's your end game? What's your why? Mm. 
because most of you, your why is so that you look cool, you have bragging rights, it's selfish. And guess what? God will never bless you with a million followers if all you're going to do is be selfish and use them for you. Mm. That is a reality. Mm. You will only be blessed with what you are able to bless others with mm. and bless God with. That, wow. unfortunately, is how it works. Mm. If you're not a believer, at least believe in this. Do for others. Mm. Mm. Give and you shall receive. You know me, Karibu to me, she killed me. Yes, 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 yes. I always tell people, please, when I'm talking, come with a pen and a paper. Please, always yes. come with a pen and a paper. I did tell you, like, literally, I will need to rewatch this. And I think that is such a great place to actually land this conversation. Whose timeline are you operating on? What is your why, really? And I feel like even for personal branding, as we think about how we want to brand ourselves, it still goes back to why again. And I love how we've been talking about branding, but we've got to questions of what are your fears? What are you so afraid of if you don't have a million followers? Or what are you so afraid of if you lose some people along the way? So... I love that this has been such a deep conversation. Honestly, I hope I can convince you to come and be a lecturer. <laughs> but last we shall we shall I'm... discuss. Mushahara yes, Ngapi, Mushahara Ngapi. No, we shall you discuss. <laughs> you may attend after this. I'll come look for you because, yeah, as we do, uh, maybe there's something I should have mentioned. There's some people who are here, and I love this, like Jackie Karagai, she has said that, I love that indeed only God can determine our season. Thank you for that reminder. So just as you go home, Kaleche, I want you to know that there is someone who you have restored hope in, or there's someone who you have brought back to reality. Like Amka, mm. you know, I, I can also see Roy Egunza saying, I really appreciate your time and for sharing such an inspirational session that is full of wisdom. Oh, they're saying, I wish to join Lapi. Ah, Kaleche, you should just get loyal. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's over. It's over. Yes. Where, where, where do I sign to become a lecturer? Let's do this. I am, I I am ready. <laughs> uh, I love that Caroline is saying that consistency is the key. And indeed, that is the key, as you can see. And maybe, as I said, that this was such a great place to land our conversation. But I think, Kaleche, I'll just ask you one last thing. So we've talked to the person that feels like they're late. We've talked to the person that wants to start. And they want yeah. all of these followers. If you were to give one last, like, word of wisdom around branding and reinventing one's brand, what would your final word be? Um, I think my, my final takeout for you would be that your personal brand is always going to have to be the authentic you, the mm -hmm. one that is effortless in presenting itself. Package yourself the way you want others to see you, but mm -hmm. you want them to see the real you, what it is that you are created to do, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then um, if, you're, if you're out there and thinking, how do I start packaging myself? Mm -hmm. Start again by looking at what I'm good at, what I am, what I can do effortlessly, mm -hmm. okay? mm. what I believe will make mm. me happy for mm. how long doing mm. the same thing will keep you happy. Mm. I've been happy talking, mm. I'd say all my life and I kept at it. Back in different mm. dimensions all the things mm. i have done mm. have been about talking as an actor you speak a good actor mm. makes a good radio host by the way because it's also yeah. acting mm. as i did the radio i learned how to do good interviews 
Mm. being inquisitive asking questions i did that mm. as a tv host mm. now that i'm here running my own content creation and teaching other people how to do that and 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 filming small productions for companies i am mm. able to direct them because i am still using what i learned over the years but now in mm. a different place the reason you're going to have to learn how to diversify is so that your your times as they change and as systems change and things evolve you're mm. able to evolve with them mm. that's mm. why diversification is so important mm. but it starts with understanding your brand who are you then now you can now personalize it according to those things that i have said that work for you mm. purpose is the key what's your purpose Mm. what were you created to do mm. and by the way you don't have to figure it all out now mm. but it's good to start mm. thinking about it and things wow. change things mm. change but the key core thing that makes you you will never mm. change mm. never change yeah the core thing that make you will never change yeah whatever makes you you in yeah. your unique self it will never change just mm. remember that just wow. remember that mm. so as you learn as you see oh okay now it's changed guys are guys are doing um, more in fact just because i'm speaking to young people mm. and your tiktok users mm. if your tiktok users tiktok of 2019 and tiktok of today has changed yeah tiktok of 2019 was about doing crazy dances and all these um, fast paced edited things right now people are enjoying authentic conversations the other day i saw a trending tiktok of a chick woke up and oh, was it a chick or a guy i can't remember woke up and just said hey you guys let me tell you i had the weirdest dream and started talking about their dream that thing within three days had gotten five million hits mm. authentic natural mm. it's changed so if you mm. realize that wait the kind of content that is being posted has changed mm. see you change and people are always changing algorithms on facebook on instagram mara it was reels are hitting and now guess what now it's become a carousel of posts did you know that that yeah, posting yeah, yeah. more uh, carousel has now become the thing that's doing well mm -hmm. are you paying attention to the things that will keep your brand growing whatever it is around whichever industry whatever are you mm -hmm. alert are you aware are you mm -hmm. keeping your eyes open on oh okay these days kunaenda ev these days so even me as it changes i change but i'm changing it in my style not copy pasting mm. in my mm. style mm. that's how you define yourself as a brand that's how you set yourself apart wow thank you so much i think that is such a great place to land this conversation the key thing that make who you are do not change so maybe let's go and explore those things and the final one but mean kotuna take out start out let me just tell you that let's so it can't even recap everything cuz it's a lot i'm taking home mm. as i mentioned to you as we did our rehearsals it's i feel i was waiting for this so much because i feel like for many of us here it's going to be the space where we start thinking about our brands again and how we want to present ourselves and i'm so happy that i'll now go into it thinking who is the most authentic crispa that even mm. as i diversify it will not be such core changes that are not true to who i have been created to be and for that i thank you we have so many comments on linkedin and even here on this chat you know someone is saying me i'm just happy to have seen you again kaleche like thank you oh, yes they like ah so so na kuja kufuata now we know instagram you know, so at kaleche mumo is where i am all the time that for me is my easiest platform i'm trying to start uh, tiktoking but really instagram is be for me mm. so if you've missed me follow me i have a show every wednesday 6 to 8 pm called kem radio which is a mock up of a radio mm -hmm. show where we discuss different conversations around relationships which is what you know me for so come come yeah ingia live uniambie eh tulikuwa na rapid eh and then you give your comments evo yes yes indeed and we have we have shared kalechers uh tweet uh, rather instagram handles so please click on that link before you leave just go follow her i mean just your daily stories mimi 
and your story sparks on my sweet. Okay, what's the verse for the day today? I know that you consistently <laughs> post, so you're literally my plug for that and so much more. Maybe the last thing I would want to address here besides giving like tremendous thanks to every single person that has been here is I have seen questions. So hello, how do we get to join Lapid? Please, what is the process? Please share. So what I can say, the first thing is that we currently have applications open for our Crossroads program. So the Crossroads program is for professionals that have a minimum of five years of work experience. So these are people getting into strategic career management, strategic brand management. You know, Kalecha, this is what I was telling you, huh? We are going to look for you because we have no classes problem. on personal branding that I'm I ready. think. Yeah that I think you'd be excellent for. Um, so, so for you who's thinking on how you can join Crossroads, we have already shared the information with you on the chat, but also I'll make sure as I send, as we send the thank you email to everyone, just check out in your emails tomorrow. We will share that information, how you can join. Uh, for the other ones who do not have those years of experience, we will be starting our flagship program that is now for people with, you know, you're still studying or you're still in school. We have another program for you called the flagship program and that we will be starting the recruitment in May. So we will just allow you to apply early just because we love you and you are here and you've already been inspired. So we know you're ready. Yeah. And with that, I guess we come to the close of this webinar. Kalecha, I can assure you. We just, Yanni, you said, you know, our bar was already here because we've been doing, you know, we're doing this from God, so it's good. I just made it over up here. Amen. The, we thank the, the Lord The next for this. guest that I pray, or the just look for you, <laughs> a clue for Kaleche. So Kaleche, what do I say after you, you know? Um, no, everybody has their unique thing, and I'm sure you will get people who will um, share and you'll get to learn. As well, mm -hmm. just quickly remind the people, go to yes. YouTube look for conversations with Kaleche. Kaleche that is yeah. uh, my new YouTube show that I mm -hmm. um, just released a series around my love story, the most um, coveted conversation around me as a brand because I mm -hmm. never shared it before, but you can mm -hmm. go and check it out. And mm -hmm. um, more is coming on that particular channel. More different conversations mm -hmm. are coming. So I'm excited and thankful for all of you who are here Thank you for all your questions. I was seeing them coming in and going, oh my God, oh my God. There are many, but I hope um, we have done them justice. Yeah. And also just thank you to you, Rispa, and the entire team at Lapid Leaders Africa for the opportunity mm. to come and share to the youth. For me, being able to impact and, and share with other young people is so important because mm. whatever it is I have been privileged to experience is mm. important if, I can share it and it changes another person's life. So I hope somebody is living here with mm. their life feeling like it's been inspired, a perspective has been changed. And mm. I, I can't wait to see what it will be like for you with the mm. information you've learned here today. Yeah. Use it, use it, use it. And all the best to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And thank you to everyone that has joined us on LinkedIn. I'm so sorry. I hope you do not feel neglected. You are really trying to do this for you as well. If you have any questions, please do not feel shy. Keep asking them. We could actually send them to you, Kalecha, then you can answer them on your Instagram. Sure thing. Sure thing. Yeah, sure you can thing. actually answer them there. So do yeah. not feel shy. If you have any more questions, just drop them on our LinkedIn. We will do, we will find a way to do a follow up so that as many of our questions are answered. With that, I would like to invite all of you to go have such great nights as well as a great week. And now that we've been told by Kaleche, first it takes time. So start, start today, Mandy. Single just Anna. Okay, it's not like it will be, it's never that late, but now that you have the opportunity of having known this. Let's go and make use of it. Let's go and make something of it. Otherwise, from our entire team at Lapid Leaders Africa, from our leadership, from our CEO, Esther Moniki, who couldn't be here because she's, you know, out on a different assignment, to our chief of staff, Dennis Karafa, to our team here, Frank Komu, and so many of us that are here. Thank you so much. It was such a joy for us to host you. It was such a joy for us to host you, Kaleche. And with that, I invite our, I see our team, last thing, they have shared the link to 
conversations with Kaleche. So you better look at that before you go. Um, with that, I invite our technical team to close the meeting for everyone. But once again, thank you so much, Kaleche. I think I'll just forward you all the thank yous that have come in for you. Yeah, so thank you so okay. much for having me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye bye, everyone. We love you. We appreciate you. And we look forward to even serving you more as you join our LAPID community, both for classes and even for future webinars that we do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, my God.